Good morning, you beautiful Unity of the Oaks folks. So happy to see you today. We're going to sing one of our favorites. Let's stand, and Paul and I will do the verse, and then we'll do the chorus together. Thank you for this beautiful day. The rain will fall, the wind will blow, the sun will shine, and the grass will grow. The seasons change, and for all we know, love is sprouting up all around us. Thank you for this beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. Hello, everyone. I'm Stacy, one of your co-spiritual leaders here at Unity Oaks. So hello and welcome in. Welcome to this beautiful Sunday. We're getting kind of cozy. I see some blankets and jackets and fall has arrived here in Southern California. So thank you for joining us. Welcome to everyone. Today I saw that we have people from Brazil and Africa who have been watching this last week, as well as from Missouri and Florida. So we are all connected. Here's what's so interesting. I wanted to start by sharing this with you. And if you watch my Inspiration Wednesdays, Wednesdays at 1230 Live on Facebook, I shared this a couple weeks ago, but I thought it was so important that I bring it to you today. It was like a sign from the acorn gods. Or someone's trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> and Chicken Little said, right. Okay, wow. So here's what's interesting. So from the um, newspaper a few weeks ago, this new research came out. It said, listen to this. It said, when people listen to the same story, each alone in their own home, their heart rates rise and fall in unison. They went on to say that... Let me see here. The heart's connection to the brain is so tight that when we hear the same story, our heart rates sync up. And then it later says, the novel finding is that heart rate correlation between subjects does not require them to actually be interacting or even be in the same place. They can be listening to stories all alone at home, and their heart rate fluctuations will align with the story and thus correlate with the other listeners. So in other words, the researcher said, when we listen to the same radio program or watch a Netflix show or we're here together on Sundays, whether we're watching it now or later, our heartbeats are in unison, showing that we're not alone. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah that right now, all of us here, our heartbeats are becoming in unison. That everyone watching, their heartbeats are with us in unison. And even if they're watching later, their hearts will start to be in the same pace as all of ours. Wow, we're really connected. I just found that to be so beautiful. I couldn't help but sh not share that today. So let's start this Sunday with prayer. As we bring our heartbeats in unison together, we turn within. We take a breath, a full and grateful breath. 
that we have arrived, at the busyness, the rush to get here. That's all done. Right now, we're just here under the oak trees together, our hearts beating as one. We give thanks for this connection, this life connection, this soul connection to one another. We know that as one of us raises our consciousness, the rest of us also raise our consciousness, and thus we heal the world. So in this moment, we send out that vibration of healing the vibration of peace, the vibration of kinship. We see love surrounding us, all of us, no matter where we are and when we're watching. So we take a grateful, thankful breath. As we fully arrive to this Sunday morning, we open our eyes. We say, thank you, thank you, thank you, sweet spirit, all that is. So today I'm talking about the importance of positive thinking and optimism, six steps I have for you, so it's going to be a great Sunday. So, music team, let's take it away. Let's get started. Good morning, everyone. Oh, boy, this is one of our favorites. Get up off that. On your feet, baby. <laughs> We're going to do God is Good, Good in Everyone, our five paces. Are you ready? I think you know the words. God is good. Everyone. And a thought, and a thought can change your water into wine. Prayer and meditation. Prayer and meditation make it easy to feel. But you gotta walk the talk to make it real. Jimmy, your platform assistant for today. With Jimmy's in the house. With all the announcements on what this wonderful church is doing. And you can also find information in our weekly e-letter and our monthly newsletter that is mailed out. And contact our office if you need help receiving these or if you'd like to be added to our list. Our grief group, hosted by Valerie Kobabe, will be held tonight at 7.15, where we'll be supported in any loss you may have experienced. Attendance is on a love offering basis and is being held at Snapdragon Healing Center just down the street from the church. And if you'd like to attend tonight's group, contact Valerie Kobabe at MiraclePaint at AOL.com so she knows you're coming. And so have, we have something very special in store for this Friday. Join us online for our Halloween party this Friday, October 29th at 7.30 p.m. Nick, you all remember Nick, will be back to be our game show host. So prizes will be awarded throughout the night. You must RSVP for this event to obtain the link to join us. You can do so by signing up with the link in your weekly newsletter or by contacting the office. Halloween falls on Sunday this year. Come dressed in costume. We want to see everyone dressed in the holiday spirit. We will have prizes for everyone who comes dressed in costume. 
Next, Sunday, November 7th, join Wendy Yost for a fellowship, I mean, a workshop entitled Setting Your Intentions for the Holidays. We will, we will fellowship at, can I say this in church? Badass Tacos. Oh, yeah, I did it. Or, or chocolate for a trust on from 11:30 to 12:30, which is optional then begin the work we begin the workshop at one under the oaks you are welcome to bring lunch and eat under the oats as well this interactive workshop is designed to support us in realigning your time and your energy and attention and towards what matters most despite what store displays are trying to dictate so thank you to everyone who attended our town hall meeting. Uh, if you missed it, you can still watch it on Facebook, I believe through tomorrow. And we had six people share our service about spiritual abundance from the last Sunday. And we want to thank those who shared. Sherry, Percy, and, and Costa. The way we share unity, folks, and our message of positive, positive Christianity is by sharing today's service. So either by sharing on Facebook or YouTube link or by word of mouth. And even if you're here in person right now, quickly jump on Facebook and share, your serv share the service or share the YouTube link when you get home. Now it's time for a daily word with our prayer chaplain, Janie. Good morning. The word for today is positive. My positive attitude helps me see the good in my life. Positivity is how I engage the world and how I live my life. No matter what is going on in my world, I always have the power to choose my attitude. A positive attitude extends to all people I encounter. I am committed to beholding their divinity, no matter what they may be going through or the challenges they may be facing. Even though I see their humanity clearly, I know there is so much more to them than personality and circumstance. Positivity brightens my mood, enlivens my body, and keeps me eagerly expecting all the good to come. I am blessed to see the best in myself, in others, and all around me. And from Romans 15, I myself feel confident about you, my brothers and sisters, that you yourself are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to instruct one another. Again, the word is positive. And the affirmation, my positive attitude, helps me see the good in my life. And so it is. Amen. Let's settle into our chairs and listen to the words. The power of now is always present, nowhere to be than where you are. The power of now flows oh so peacefully. The power of now. is always perfect, nothing to be than who you are. The power of now flows oh so easily. Be willing to let go. Let everything go. 
everything wash away the power of night the power of night the power of night now. So that's the thought we take into our meditation time together. So taking a breath, allowing the shoulders to come down, feeling your head smooth, that forehead smooth, the ears drop. Taking another breath and letting the chair support you as you close your eyes or you find a spot just before you to focus on. And we remember that breath. Breath comes from the meaning soul or life force. So we just take a moment in the power of now to observe the breath. We observe the breath as it comes in. And we observe the breath as it goes out. You may even want to say, breathing, and exhale, or inhale, and exhale. I'm not controlling the breath, just observing it, and being an appreciation of your breath, finding its perfect rhythm and breathing and beating in time with everyone around you, even those not in this space. Feeling that life energy connection, that soul connection. And so we just breathe in and breathe out. thoughts arise of what's happened in the past, we just simply say, past. And we go back to our breath. And when thoughts arise of what we have to do in the future, we just say, future. And we go back to the breath. And we take a couple more breaths, just watching as it comes in our body, that life force. And as we exhale and our soul is nourished. Life force comes in. And as we exhale, our soul is nourished. And we take our attention to our heart space. We place a smile on our heart, not to cover up over anything, but to set the intention, the intention of a smile, the intention of love, the intention of connection, the intention of compassion towards ourselves, as well as others. So I invite you to bring someone into your heart, someone that you are so grateful for, someone you have loving feelings towards. And maybe that person has passed, or maybe they're still here in the present time. But bringing that person into your heart space Pouring your love and gratitude for this person, just like a river, letting it surround them. In 
and feeling your heart space as it grows 10 feet around you. 10 feet in diameter, your heart can be felt. And so you bring another person that you are grateful for, or maybe a pet, or maybe an experience, something or someone that you are grateful for. You send loving kindness towards. Sitting for a moment in that gratitude. In your heart, it grows another 10 feet in diameter. So now 20 feet around you is your loving kindness. And your loving kindness connects to those around you. Your loving kindness grows and it wraps everyone up in its loving kindness in Thousand Oaks in Southern California. This loving kindness spreads across the country. We feel it and we visualize it as it starts to grow and cover the world. And as it goes around the world, it comes back to us so that we wrap our own selves in our own loving kindness and compassion. That we are doing such a good job. Yeah. So we take a moment to say, wow, me, I am doing a great job of being human. I am doing so, so well. And so in this moment, I am showing myself so much compassion and love. And I know as I show myself love and compassion, I invite others to do the same. And the healing in the world has begun. So we know those with heavy hearts and minds, you are healed in this moment. We know those who are going through a challenge of any kind, you are healing in this moment. As our hearts beat in unison. And so we return to the breath. We breathe in that life force and we exhale knowing our souls are nourished. We take another rejuvenating breath, refreshing breath. And we feel the chair that's been supporting us. We start to wiggle our fingers and our toes, move our head from side to side. Start to hear the sounds around us as we slowly open our eyes in this heart-centered feeling of gratitude. And so it is, and so we let this be. Love and compassion. So it is. Amen. There's a lot of situations that test our patience. We don't have to let them ruin our day. Cause they're just little speed bumps on the road of life. And nothing's gonna rain on our parade. And if you want to know the secret for getting things done with minimum headache and maximum fun, some simple advice you gotta treat people nice. And you'll always have a good outcome. Just remember a little positivity, positivity. That's all you really need. A sunny disposition keeps shining unconditionally. Yeah! Driving on the freeway, there's not a lot of leeway on the side, up ahead, or behind. 
Sounds like everybody's late for something. Racing, rock, bumping, still not making good time. So instead of giving someone a piece of your mind, stop, let them in, and then flash the peace sign. And hold up two fingers instead of just one. And they'll get the same for you, son. Oh, here you go. Positivity, positivity. That's all you really need. A sunny disposition keeps shining unconditionally. Oh, yeah. And you'll find that the potential for joy is exponential. Imagine what this world could be with just some positivity. Positivity. That's all we really need. The people who soar like an eagle with just a smile and a good attitude with their springs wet, raising everyone in sight, lifting our collective mood. And it's amazing how one person can somehow light up a room or sing a happy song and make a flower start to bloom. Or reach out to somebody who's feeling lost and all alone And say some words of comfort that makes them feel at home All it takes is just some positivity Positivity, that's all you really need Oh, a sun of disposition keeps shining unconditionally Let's go, y'all Imagine what this world could be Just a little bit Positivity Positivity That's all we really need Let's do it again, y'all Positivity Positivity That's all we really need A sun of disposition Keeps shining on Imagine what this world could be with just a positivity. That was good. That's a Harold Payne song, yes? yes. Yeah, you did great. Positive, Positive pain, yes. Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. Um, okay, I thought I would start with something fun today because I got to make sure you're all, I see you're all bundled up. But um, okay, ready? And Juan, uh, Juan. <laughs> Graham, one of my three kids. <laughs> um, Graham will have it pulled up on the screen, too. Okay, so I'm going to hold up this picture. And I want you to tell me, is the house, you can look it on the screen or pull up Facebook, too. Okay, is the house sinking or is it floating? Is the house sinking? Don't say it out loud. Just, is the house sinking or is it floating? And come back around. Okay, Rhonda looks like it's a test question. You're not going to fail. <laughs> it's Okay. We're not going to kick you out if you get the wrong answer. Okay, ready? Does everyone see it? You had a moment? Okay, is it? So how many people thought it was, it was sinking? Well, that's because you're here at Unity. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, let's all just go home now. We're all done. Good. Okay. Okay, so is it bad that I thought it was sinking? <laughs> 
I saw it and I was like, definitely, it's sinking. Okay, so researchers say if you think it's sinking, you have a more negative outlook. <laughs> And if you saw it was floating, you have a more positive outlook, which is why you all thought it was floating. It's floating. Okay, good. I'm going to go work on, I'm going to work on these six steps I'm about to tell you about. <laughs> well, you know what, too? I think that also uh, it depends on where you are in the day or in your life, too, how you see the, the house. Because I think on that day, I was um, tired and exhausted. I had had my third booster. And um, so I was not in the right place. I saw it sinking. The, the house was sinking on that day. Now I see it's floating. Today, I totally see it's floating. But also, if you saw that it was sinking, OK, I don't want you to like label yourself as a pessimist or anything, OK? So it's just a fun activity for us. Um, so it came from, whoops, it came from this great I mean, I saw this at Sprouts a couple months ago. So a special time magazine, it said, The Power of Positive Thinking, Why Attitude Matters. Now, you know I had to pick that up, right? I mean, that like I saw that from feet away, and I was like, it's mine. So um, yeah, The Power of Positive Thinking, a whole special edition about the power of positive thinking. And of course, you know, Unity is known as positive, practical Christianity. That's our tagline, everybody. And we practice positive, affirmative prayer as our prayer technique. And so we can attribute this to Myrtle Fillmore, our co-founder, and all of her teachers from the mid-late 1800s. And how amazing that they found that when you focus on healing instead of illness, wholeness instead of brokenness, that their lives improved in miraculous ways, not just physically, but also emotionally and spiritually improved. And so now, isn't it amazing that science is now catching up to say, hey, if you have a positive, hopeful, grateful attitude, you live longer, you have more fulfilled lives. And that's what the Fillmores were teaching 132 years ago. Wow. So how amazing. So, I mean, it totally makes sense that you all passed the house test, I'm just saying. Um, so there's a lot of great information. So I wanted to share with you, because we all say, like, yeah, being positive is great. It's a great thing. But here are the health benefits. Ready? Optimistic men and women are more than 50% more likely to have a longer life than their pessimistic counterparts. Optimists are more than 13%, even more than 30% in another study, uh, less likely to have a heart attack. Optimists report a better quality of life than pessimists. Well, that makes sense, right? Optimists experience, oh, this is interesting. Optimists experience less days stressed about money by 145 days a year. That's 40% less of your year not worried about money. Um, optimists are five times less likely to get burned out, and optimists are 40% more likely to get a work promotion. So... That alone, I would say. But here's another interesting part, is that scientists have now discovered that our brains are hardwired for hope and to think positively. We're hardwired that way. Our brains are hardwired for positivity and hopefulness. And so it's up to us to train that muscle, the positivity muscle to use our minds as the powerful tools that they are because we're hardwired for it. So now it's up to us to keep it tuned up in the positivity arena, right? So in this great book, oh, my sleeve's going to keep catching up, um, How to Do the Work. Oh, this is a good one if you want a good study. Uh, How to Do the Work by Dr. Nicole LaPera. Um, she calls herself the holistic psychologist. But in there, she has this study that was done in Boston in 1979. A Harvest, Harvard, Harvard psychologist recruited elderly men from a nursing home to live in a monastery. It was going to be two weeks to look at the power of belief and its effect on aging. So she told the first group to live, or he did, live as if the clock had suddenly been turned back by 20 years overnight. 
they were asked to live as the younger version of themselves. And the researchers, even in the monastery, in their living space, they changed it. So they put all the furniture was changed to 20 years ago, the magazines 20 years ago. They put the Ed Sullivan show on in black and white and old movies on. They encouraged them to discuss events from that era, like Bay of Pigs. Um, they removed all the mirrors and put only photos of them from when they were younger. And then the second group remained in the present time period, but were urged to reminisce about the past, about the good old days. Remember, I started the year with that talk. Um, yeah, so the second group, they were in this current time, but to reminisce about the past and the good old days. Okay, so the results, everybody, were astounding. Both groups had vast improvements in physical cognitive and emotional health. And in fact, instead of two weeks, the study only had to last one week because the results were so obvious. And in fact, arthritis went away. In the men who imagined themselves younger, 63% demonstrated measurably higher intelligence. They reported improvement in all five of their senses, taste, smell, hearing, touch, then they had photos of the men, right the day, like right the day before they started the study, and the last day when they came out of the study. And they had strangers who had nothing to, knew nothing about the study and what had happened. They asked strangers to look at the photos and say which was the before and which was the after. Overwhelmingly, strangers picked the after as two years before. After one week, the amazing power of our thoughts and how they can influence us. So Dr. Nicole um, says in her book, there is tremendous freedom in not believing every thought we have and understanding that we are the thinker of our thoughts but not the thoughts themselves. Let me repeat that. That we are the thinker of our thoughts but not the thoughts themselves. Our minds are powerful tools, and if we do not become consciously aware of the disconnection between our authentic selves and our thoughts, we give our thoughts too much control over our daily lives. So how are you using your mind? How are you using your mind? It's a powerful, powerful tool. So it turns out that there are six actions that we can take to become more optimistic, more hopeful, to have a more positive attitude, to train our brains for optimism so that we can live healthier, longer, happier lives. Six steps. So four came from the Time a a Magazine article, one from this book, and one I pulled from somewhere else. Um, and so the first action that we can take to be more optimistic is to reframe. So when something negative happens, we look for opportunity instead of ruminating on the loss. So for example, you were planning to travel and now suddenly you can't travel. So your thought would be, well, that just means I have more time to take care of some of those projects around my house. You reframe it. Or you don't get the job that you applied for. Well, that's okay because now I can fine tune my resume and I can really get a job that's a good match for both of us. You reframe it. In other words, you ask, what can I gain from this? Instead of what has the loss been or what a bummer and getting into the ruminating, you reframe into what is the opportunity here? What can I gain? The second thing we can do to be more positive and optimistic, divert. So there's times when our feelings are really, really strong and we can't reframe. I'm thinking about like if we have a loss of a pet or a family member or our own health, um, that's something that those feelings are so strong. And so what we can do, if we can't reframe right away, we can divert to the people and activities that help us feel better. We can go to a friend. We can go for a walk. We can pet our animal. Um, we can divert to activities that help us be in the feeling, to process the feeling. So it doesn't mean that we're diverting away from the feelings. Actually, what we're doing is we're accepting the big feeling that we're having, that a big, strong feeling, and we're observing. Wow. Yeah, this is a 
a big loss, or this is, I'm feeling this sadness, or this loneliness, or whatever that big feeling is. And then we can move, because our feelings are not us. Remember, we're just the thinker of the thoughts. We're not the thoughts ourselves. So we can move those feelings with movement. Again, a walk, or with words, talking, journaling, and with compassion. So diverting into compassion, movement, connection. The third way we can be more optimistic is to savor the good. Ooh, I like that. But you know what happens is that we have such a hard time accepting compliments. And especially complimenting each other, or ourselves. I mean, we can compliment each other a lot, right? That's easy. But complimenting ourselves. So when someone else will say, oh, you look fantastic today, what do we usually say? Ah, oh, no, no, not this old thing. I need a new haircut, you know, right? We brush it off. But what research and studies are showing is that we need to savor the good, especially the compliments that people give us when they say thank you to us, or you look fantastic, or you're so smart, or you are so talented. I mean, they are so talented. You are so talented, right? Yes. Yet, yeah, no. <laughs> the house is not sinking, Rick. The house is floating. Let the house float. Yeah, it's about accepting the compliment. Accepting the compliment and giving ourselves compliments. So here's what was so interesting, is that the more good you notice about yourself and others, the more you build your vocabulary of positive words, and therefore your mindset becomes more positive. So as you build your vocabulary of more positive words, your mindset becomes more positive. As you become more positive, you grow your words. Do you see the circle there? Yeah, so savoring the good, complimenting yourself and others. Something else that helps us become more optimistic, time in nature. Now, there's been a lot of studies through the years that have shown that the more time we have in nature, the better for our mental and emotional health. But also, what's so interesting is that even lately, it's very, very specific as far as making sure you have greenery, like our trees, greenery around you, or water features. So even if you're at your house, whether you have a big backyard or just a small porch or patio for your apartment, what you can do is you can, you know, put some green plants around. You can have a small water feature, but making sure you add those and create that. Or also creating within your daily or weekly routine, adding a walk in a park or a hike with a group. I know Allison's been hiking with a group. Um, or a trip to the ocean. I mean, the ocean is right here. So making sure that that's part of your routine, that you get out into nature. I know for my own self, my renewal time, whether it's on a daily basis, you know, usually I go walking up in our hills, um, but also for my spiritual renewal time, I make sure I get to the beach. Because I know for me, even when I was a little girl, that minute I, I put my feet on the sand, I just, whew, I just feel relaxation. The waves, the wind, everything, my body just suddenly relaxes. So finding that place in nature for yourself. And then I recently heard author Mel Robbins, and she was speaking about why we get so disappointed and depressed when our vision boards don't manifest. Right? We get our boards together, we put all the photos there, and we're praying on it and meditating on it, and then it doesn't manifest, and we get so upset. And she said, it's because we need to imagine alternative realities. In other words, we need to imagine all the way through and the hard stuff that can happen along the way, because then we know we're resilient. And it's actually resilience that builds more optimism. Yeah, the challenges actually can build your positive mindset. So if the goal is to save, you know, if you have a personal goal, hey, I want to save $5,000, and you can imagine that, oh, I'm seeing unexpected income, and I'm seeing a new job opportunity, I'm seeing these different ways I can get $5,000, but you also need to imagine within that, oh, and now a big bill comes in. <coughs> okay, you're going to pause that visualization, and instead of the, <coughs> Okay, that's okay, right? I'm going to see myself working through it. 
I'm going to see myself paying off that bill and still making my goal of $5,000. It's getting yourself all the way through. You know, Olympians do this too. They immerse themselves in the visualization process. They imagine the race, but they imagine everything that can go awry in that race as well. They imagine, you know, if it's a swimmer, the water, the temperature of the water, the crowd, the cheering of the crowd. What does it even feel like, the temperature outside the pool? Who's in the lanes next to them? This person overtaking them. A cramp from the race before. They visualize all of it and getting to the end. I know, um, I may have shared this before. I, saw, I heard it on a podcast. Um, it was an Olympic skier. She does that crazy, like, they take you in a helicopter and drop you off at the top of the mountain and you ski down. I mean, I'd never do that. <laughs> so I don't even know what it's called. But, um, but she was talking about before the race, she stands. Now, she's practiced lots of times, both physically practiced and in her mind. She's practiced. But before the race, she'll stand at the bottom of the mountain, and she looks up, and she'll say, ah, here's a big boulder. Okay, that I'm going to have to turn just a slightly different. Oh, there's some ice right here. I'm going to have to dig in deeper. Oh, there's extra snow there. So that she says, so by the time I get up there and I'm going through the race, those things happen, but I've prepared myself for it. It's reminding yourself that you can overcome challenges, that you are resilient. And then resilience brings us back to the start, which was reframing. Right? So looking at it as an opportunity. And I think about our unity principle number three. Our thoughts have creative power to determine events and attract experiences. Because the thoughts we hold within us show up in our world outside of us. Think yourself young for a week, and people think you're two years younger after one week. The law of mind action, thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Or that beautiful song that we sing sometimes, our thoughts are prayers, and we are always praying. And psychologist William James said, the greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. So with each thought, we can direct our life, just like a good director does. So resilience, step five. So six, last one. So Dr. LaPera says in her book that the best tool we have to train our brains is mindfulness. Witnessing, observing. And of course, there's been lots of spiritual teachers who have talked about the benefits of mindfulness and being in the present moment, the power of now, right? To pause and witness the thoughts, remembering you're the thinker of the thoughts, but you're not the thoughts themselves. And here's what's remarkable. Our brains can grow new neurons and do so most efficiently when we're focused on the present moment. The more time we have in meditation like we did that I led you through this morning, just watching the breath, being with this moment and this moment, being compassionate, growing our hearts. That's where we grow these neurons. And then the MRIs, brain scans, show that when we live in the present moment and appreciate it, we grow the area in the brain where our conscious awareness lives. So as we become more conscious, we become more optimistic. As we become more present moment oriented, we become more conscious, we become more optimistic. Wow. We have the power to do that. So six steps. Six steps to be more optimistic, hopeful, to live a healthier life. One, reframe to the positive. Two, divert to get the support you need when those feelings are really strong when, um, until it's easier to reframe. Three, savor the good and compliment yourself. I want you to give yourself a compliment right now. Okay, good. I want you to spend time in nature, 
five, imagine the goal from beginning to end, including the challenges and how you can overcome them and remind yourself that you are resilient. And then six, practice mindful meditation. Take moments throughout your day to be in the present moment. General Colin Powell, who we just lost this last week, he said, perpetual optimism is a force multiplier. Do you want more of something in your life? Then you use optimism. And then actor Sylvester Stallone said, I believe any success in life is made by going into an area with a blind, furious optimism. So I invite all of you, friends, to step forward today with blind, furious optimism. You in? Oh, yeah. Okay. Blessings, everyone. Happy Sunday. I'm feeling it. Yeah, this is a bit of a, a tribute to Harold Payne today. Harold, thank you for all your positive songs. Let's go. Optimism is contagious. can make a difference where positive messages dance past the edges of doubt it's a rhythm it's a rhythm it's a movement it's the beating of drums and you can't help but move to its music when it comes sing it with us can be moved by the moon. Armies disarmed and snakes simply charmed by a tune. It's a candle, it's a beacon, it's a comet, it's a constellation. Oh yeah. So let yourself go and bask in the glow of the illumination. Optimism is contagious. Say it loud and say it strong. Optimism is contagious. Pick it up and pass it on. Oh, simply defined, it's a state of mind. So do you want to stay? Everyone, 
I'm Allison, your board member of the day. And after all of that, how can you not be optimistic and positive? What amazing music. What an incredible message, Stacy. Thank you so much. Wow, I'm, I'm on fire. I hope you guys all are as well. Well, if you are, we invite you to partner with our spiritual community. If what you heard today inspired you, we ask that you consider a gift to Unity of the Oaks. If you're online or in person and want to give at any time, visit our website or text to give, that's G-I-V-E. The information will be on your screen if you're watching online. If you're here in person with us today, the board member on duty, and that's me, um, I am going to be over there at the Love Offering Basket, and please feel free to stop by with your contribution. Thank you for partnering with us to bring spiritual and transformational messages to our community every Sunday. You are a part of helping us transform the world. We value and appreciate your gift. Join me now in the offering blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I give in love, and I trust God. Now Stacy has our thank yous. Thank you, Allison. And thank you, everyone, who does contribute to our spiritual community, keeping us here for you. Um, I just want to make sure you know that uh, Janie will be here as your prayer chaplain. If you have anything on your heart or mind that you need to pray with her about or even celebrate, we take celebrations too, right, Janie? So she will be right here at the benches uh, maintaining social distance so you can pray with her. Also, you can go onto our website and uh, submit a prayer request there um, or contact our office for a prayer request as well. Okay, it's the last Sunday of the month, and because we are so hopeful, optimistic, and positive today, we are going to say thank you to everyone who helped us this month, okay? So our Sunday service setup, Tommy DeGagne and his brother Joey staying with us an extra month. Our board members on duty were Melanie, Jimmy, and Allison. Thank you to them. Okay, our musicians, we have Sherry, and we had, um, and Jack was still with us this month, and we had Paula and Rick and Tom and Tommy. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, thank you. Bring in the sounds. We have Jordan and Graham. <laughs> I forgot my own son's name. Who's that kid's name? Jordan and Graham, thank you for your sound and audiovisual help. Our platform assistants this month, we had Juan and Layla, whose birthday was yesterday. We have Betsy. We had Jimmy. So thank you for our platform prayer chaplains this month. We had Tracy and Susan and Melanie and Julia. And Julia was online. And Janie, so thank you. Child care, we had um, Riley. That's Tisa's daughter. And then, of course, our administrative assistant, Tisa, helping us out in the office all month long. So can we just give everyone a big round of applause? It takes a village to put it all together. We want to do a, our special thank you this week is for everyone who came out and uh, joined us for our town hall last week. We appreciate the time and being here in person and asking your questions, giving us your feedback. Um, those of you watching, too, again, it will be on our Facebook page and our website through tomorrow, and then um, it'll be taken down. So you just have another 24 hours to watch the town hall. Um, so we just want to thank you for, again, joining us. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you for those of you who came and bundled up today under the oaks. Thank you for everyone. There's about 16 of us watching online. So thank you and everyone watching later. We know, again, as we go through our week, our hearts have been in unison. So isn't that beautiful? Okay, next week's Halloween, and I am expecting every single one of you in costume, my friends. So, okay, show up in costume. Have a fantastic positive, optimistic week. And remember, when we sing, we are joining our hearts together. Happy Sunday.
of God enfolds us, we are the love. The power of God protects us, we are the power. The presence of God watches over us, we are the presence. Wherever we are, God is, and all is positive.